Hi, welcome to Tea of Life Podcast. We are your hosts, Tiffany Thompson and Brandon Thompson. And together we work hard to transform every attitude of life by telling each adventure of life. You see what I did there? Mm -hmm. You told your whole mission statement. (laughs) So we're working on a new series and this is the beginning of that. And what we're doing is kind of going through some questions with different people on how this current situation is affecting them. And we're asking the same questions over and over again to everyone. So this is kind of the kickoff video of those videos, those questions. The very first. (laughs) So what we wanted to do was go ahead and answer these questions for our personal answers. You want to get our take on the situation. Right. The sitch, as you'd call it in shorthand, short vernacular, the sitch. You want to get the sitch. You want to get the lowdown on the sitch, the LDE on the sitch <laughs> during the COVID. The COVID? Mm-hmm. COVID. COVID-19. Okay, so we're going to answer the same questions, and then you'll see after this that we're going to release a series of videos that will be um, answering the same questions through different people's um, perspective. That's true. So one of the first questions that we ask our audience is, are you okay, and do you feel like you're hanging in there? Uh, is that a question for me? I'm going to ask you. Yes. Are I you don't okay? Know. You're around me. Are, am I okay? Are you okay? <laughs> I'm very slap happy today, apparently. <laughs> apparently you are. <laughs> um, stay tuned for the outtakes of this video. Oh, my gosh. Um, no, good. Um, I think that uh, it's been good to have some, some rest at home and worked on some projects here at the house. And spent a lot of time with you, which has been awesome. Um, my normal work means that I'm traveling a fair amount. And so being home has been awesome. Um, and I don't know. It's I miss it at the same time, but I miss also being here. So I'm kind of like torn. I want to be doing what I love in production and being out on the road and making some awesome events happen, but uh, haven't been able to do that. It's been six weeks, and all the work evaporated within 24 hours when things started getting weird at the uh, was that the beginning part of March. So it's been a bit. So yes, um, as he was saying, we are okay. We are actually more than okay, probably. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there struggling, and I don't want to downplay that at all, but, um, you know, and our heart goes out to you. And that's one reason why we want to record this series of videos is because we want you guys to understand that you're not alone, no matter where you fall in, um, in this whole spectrum. Like, you can be extremely happy that you're stuck at home, and there's a lot of people who are n- extremely sad that they're stuck at home. Stuck at home. So um, we just want to release these, you know, these conversations so that you can know that you're not alone. So I would say, first of all, like, I am okay as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably more than okay. I am a introvert extrovert. I can be extremely introverted when I need to be and I can be extroverted when I need to be. Um, So Um, I've really enjoyed actually being at home. I've enjoyed the excuse to be able to say no. Um, You know, in our podcast, we talk about saying no a lot. Um, And I feel like that was, this has kind of been my, you know, my, uh, my no for me. Like I don't have to say no anymore because no has been said for me. So, (laughs) so. It's easier um, to say no when there's a really (laughs) big reason that you shouldn't leave the house. Right. So yeah, so we're okay. Like we're 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 good. We're hanging in there. Um, we have enough toilet paper, although we are running low. <laughs> you say that at now. this moment. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've been yeah. good so far, um, and we don't necessarily have a backup plan. I don't think. Take a shower after you. Ooh, anyway, that would be a gr- so it's kind of like a great bidet. backup plan. Yeah. That's like a bidet. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. So I guess if you plan it just right then you don't have to use as much toilet paper. Let's so just say if you plan if on going just before you go to the shower, then yeah, it, let's problem just say solved. That if you're regular and you're eating your wheat and your bread, 
like you should. Um, all gluten, whole wheat, <laughs> homemade all bread. All the gluten. All the stuff <laughs> Tiffany's talked about before. Yes. Then you're regular. And you can pick a time of the day and do all your businesses this is together. Yeah. It's great. And then take a shower. And not have to use any Not have to use any toilet paper. No. Well, a little bit. <laughs> for good measure. Okay, so how has life changed for us in the past few weeks? Um, I think Brandon kind of hit on a lot of that with his uh, first answer. But um, life has changed. You know, Brandon is um, in the... Uh, what is Life it events. You? Life events industry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so literally, like we sat there one day and within 24 hours watched every one of his events be canceled, one right after the other, and um, completely you know knocked him out yeah. of a job. So um, life has changed for us in the fact that he is home a lot right now, and I absolutely love it um, because he's normally you know traveling quite a bit. Um, it's changed for us too, because you're not making an income. However, you know, because we have taught, you know, over and over again, we've talked about in our podcast, how, um, having some financial peace about your lives (laughs) is a big deal. Right. So financial peace, um, right. You know, we've talked about that a lot in a few different episodes and it's really like, playing out right now, like the things that we've talked about, like we're having to live it out right now for real because we have no income. That three to six months is a big deal. And the cool thing about having three to six months stashed behind is that when you actually have to put the brakes on your spending and you put, and you do put the brakes on your spending, that can get stretched. And so, and that's happening. Like our three to six months is going to last us a lot longer than we thought initially because we just put the brakes on everything except for the essentials and um, the bills that need to be paid. But you're not going out. Right. We're not eating, eating out right we're now. We're not doing some frivolous spending and we're not, mm-hmm. we're not. Spending money on fuel. Yeah. I mean, you know, those things that we're not yeah. spending money on. And I think um, had, had the situation been different and we not been in lockdown, but you've been out of a job, you know, we would still be spending money on fuel. We would still be spending money probably and other areas that we're not able to right now because we are you yeah. know, self <laughs> It's funny. You know, I, I, I looked place. at the, the bank statement and I could see a, a steep, like all of a sudden, just like all these line items that had stuff I'm like, where are we going to Chick-fil-A 18 times in one day? Like, no, not really, but that's what it looked like. All of a sudden, it's just like, whoop, it's gone. Mm-hmm. And so that's, I think that's happening for a lot of people just out of necessity. But at the same time, having some um, self-control in this situation uh, and putting the brakes on spending is has been what has worked for us. And so, and I will say this too: like um, we say Dave Ramsey, and we say financial peace, and we say all these things. If you have questions about it, hit us up because we Absolutely. love to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And it's never too late to start. It's never too late. You're never too far in debt to to do it. You're never too far gone to even say, oh, I, I can't do that because I, I'm i never going to get out of that situation. I'm never going to get out right. of the credit card revolving debt. I'm never going to get out of student loans. I'm never going to get out of these things. And the, the truth is, is that you just work at it and you work the plan and it happens. It happens over time. And it's, it's, a, uh, it's a behavior that you end up with instead of habits that are bad. Right. So that Absolutely. Is, mm-hmm. ha- that is 80% behavior, 20% the amount of money that you make, yeah. 20% income, 80% behavior. And, you know, financial coaching is something that we've talked about maybe doing, um, picking up as, you know, doing on the side. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask us to kind of give us a little bit of practice on maybe, you know, if we decide to do that <laughs> in the future as, um, you know, a side business, but yeah, absolutely. Um, so the other question, the next question is, um, if we're currently crisis schooling, how has this changed? Um, and as you know, like we are already homeschool family and we are not crisis schooling at the moment. In fact, we probably, we are a homeschooled family, but we are very relaxed homeschooled family. And, um, so our schooling really hasn't changed that much. Um, 
Are you answering the question or am I supposed to answer the question? We're both supposed to answer the question. Oh, man. You had me for a second there. It's like, <laughs> okay. when is she going to turn it over to me? You want to talk about no, the homeschooling? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I'd like to see how much you know about the homeschooling part. Well, Go Tiffany, ahead. Tiffany, <laughs> as she just alluded to, <laughs> is the homeschool master here in the household. And for me, it is, um, I'm just making sure that they have what they need to get things done. Um, but I will say that the homeschool situation here at the house, it's basically the same as it was. Uh, the boys get up. So this is the cool thing. The, Tiffany has gotten them to, to realize that having a good habit system um, is something that is a lifelong skill. And so the boys get up in the morning. They check their class assignments. Um, Gabriel's actually been dual enrolling. So he's got college stuff and high school stuff. And then Eden is doing uh, middle school stuff as he finishes up middle school. But they check their assignments in the morning and they knock them out and they get them done. And then the rest of the day is theirs. Mm -hmm. And isn't that how it should be for all of us? Like, yeah. check out what you got to do, get it done. And then the rest of the time is yours right. instead of the other way around. So um, they've been doing that. And for us, it's pretty hands off. It is at this point because they are um, they're self starters. They know how to take care of their own um, assignments and everything. And so you know we just have to check up and make sure that their you know their grades are good still and that they're you know they're doing well. So with that, like um, our youngest son actually takes a you know he's in a co op. And he takes a math class in our co-op because I am just, that is one thing that I, I could do elementary math, but once they hit middle school and started getting into the algebra and geometry, I can't teach that. So, um, so we outsourced that. And so he was actually going to the co-op every week, twice a week to get taught by an actual teacher, an actual certified teacher. And um, so that has obviously changed and he's not going there anymore, but they're doing all their stuff on video online at home. So he's still getting the teacher teaching him, you know, much like everyone else right now, they're doing the video thing, learning mm -hmm. at home. So he's still able to do that and also um, interact with his classmates as well. So that part has changed and he's not excited about that because he is, um, he loves being with his friends and he <laughs> loves being in class. Um, and he's not excited about the whole online thing, but he's doing really well and taking it very seriously. Yeah, it's so interesting how two boys who live their lives entirely together are wired so differently. Yeah, Gabriel's kind of flourishing and Eden's going, I want to be with my friends. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, they're both saying I want to be with their friends now. Even, mm -hmm. the introver even the introverts end up going, let's get, let's get together with people because this is... <laughs> This is enough. <laughs> right. Exactly. How has social distancing affected you the most? Let's see. Um, it really hasn't in a way. Um, I'm not one of the people that go to the grocery store like with 18 pairs of gloves and a mask and a face shield and a hazmat suit. You don't do that on a regular no, basis? I don't, I don't do that. And I don't what? do it on a regular basis and I'm not doing it now. I, I do... Um, make sure that I wash up after I'm around other people, but, um, yeah, it's, it's really kind of been what we normally do. And I would say this too, like, um, we're not prone to pick up viruses as a family. Um, we're generally pretty healthy. And the last time we got sick was just like, I can't even remember it's years ago. And so for us, I think there's a, maybe a natural tendency to, be clean enough or aware of how things spread. And we just, we're not, we're not out there grabbing viruses every day. Um, and we did talk about that in some previous episodes and I'll put links to all those in the show notes when this is all over. Yeah. Social distancing. Um, when you do have to go out for me, it's been, I mean, lately, um, like I had, I had an opportunity to go volunteer for uh, an event at uh, 
downtown Woodstock, which is kind of close to where we live. And it was to honor, oh, you know, you live in Georgia. Just kidding. <laughs> Goodness. Woodstock. Anyway, um, somewhere off 75 and 575. <laughs> anyway, um, so um, I could, you know, zoom in if you wanted, but um, <laughs> just kidding. So we went and did this event for healthcare workers to honor um, those who are in our, our area and work healthcare and first responders and stuff like that. So ended up doing a, a volunteer event with our production company that I generally do a lot of work with. And we lit up Woodstock in blue. So blue lights. Um, police came out, turned on their blue lights. It was cool. They had a video wall. And then we took... Um, there's like three or four different stages and gazebos down there in the downtown Woodstock area. And we lit up that area and just blew, just lots of production blue lights. They lit up Woodstock. Lit up Woodstock. It was great. This wasn't like in the 1960s so or anything, but this was. We're all, it's cool because we're all wearing our, our company shirts and, um, and we were able to kind of be out amongst people and see our friends that we haven't seen in quite some time. But as part of that, and to kind of make sure that we're like representing well, we all agreed that we're going to wear masks and gloves for the event. And so for me, that was really the first time I've worn a mask. And here I am huffing around, <laughs> like schlepping gear. And I'm. You feel like you're hyperventilating. I felt like I was right? suffocating, suffocating in this mask. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to get used to this. Because, folks, if this is the new normal, I'm going to have a hard time wearing a mask all the time. Because, I mean, with work. Like if you're walking around, it's okay. But when you're actually like working or you say you're like pushing hard on a, riding on a bike or I don't know, doing Hiking exercise, or, yeah, anything. it is not comfortable to be re rebreathing half of your air every time you breathe out and breathe back in. Um, so I got to, I got to figure that one out. Um, so social distancing for that event <laughs> to get to the end of your question <laughs> um, was Basically wearing a mask and gloves and still being around the people that I love and my kind of my tribe and um, maintaining distance and still having a good time. And I think that we can all continue to do that um, even after this is done. Let's get rid of the face masks for, for goodness sake, though, please. <laughs> I think for me, no. like social distancing has affected me the most by, um, I don't really know. Well, like, the I'm stay at to, home. I'm trying to think. The stay at home part of social distancing has meant that we're not able to get together with our friends that we normally would have over yes. to the house or go to their house. Yes. However, I think social distancing has basically like, it's been positive though for us in that aspect because we've been able to get together with friends that we don't normally get together with on a normal basis, friends that we've been to, you know, friends with for like yeah. 25 years or so. And now we've started like a new group, a weekly group Zoom call where we just get on and chat and we have no agenda. A lot of us just kind of sit there and just hang out and, you know, eat dinner or whatever. And it's just, we just sit there as if we're, we're just hanging out with friends. And that has been great. So that part of social distancing yeah. Um, unexpected, has been really good. Unexpected side effect is just getting together with people that you hadn't been with forever online. Mm -hmm. uh, early on, I was like, I'm going to spring for the full Zoom account so that we can have these get-togethers that last as long as we want to. And we were on the line last night with two of our longest friends for what well, started at four 7 until 11. Yeah. So yeah. we were on for four hours. We just sat there and just had just conversations like yeah it was great yeah it, it was really cool so what do you think has been um the hardest part of this for you um the hardest part for me has been obviously not going out and doing what i love and the uncertainty of how long it's going to last because like I want to be, if I don't know that this is coming back, I want to be making forward progress towards figuring out what the new normal could look like. And so I've been doing some uh, remote mixing and I've been thinking about doing some other things. Uh, kind of the online gig economy is something that um, I had looked at before because ultimately Ultimately, I want to be able to do work but not be 
required to be somewhere um, at a certain time. So remote working to me sounds really cool. And it's kind of forced me into thinking that way and looking at some alternative work endeavors. Um, Which will come in real handy once we buy our catamaran. This is true. And so <laughs> every time I, every time we make pro forward progress towards becoming independent in my workplace and independent in our finances, then um, the goal of us being able to go and sail around on a catamaran Which later be on, amazing becomes, right now. it becomes more and more reality. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. So I think for me, like the hardest part of this for me is there's two different things. One of them is seeing my kids struggle mm. with not being able to get together with their kids. I mean, my mom heart has broken quite a few times when I see them crushed because they want to get together with their friends so badly. And even if it's just, you know, just hanging out and just discussing, just being in the, in the physical presence of their friends. Um, you know, they're playing online, just like I'm sure many of your kids are um, with their friends. They're playing games and, and you know, they have their, their social media that they're constantly keeping in contact with their friends and stuff too, but it's just not the same as that physical, you know, being in the room with someone. So I think that that's been the hardest part for me. Um, that along with trying to figure out who to believe and who to not believe, like deciphering through the truth and you know, what is truth and what is false? And when it comes to the media. Oh yeah, that absolutely. <laughs> oh. So that has been, that's been a real struggle. So I, and a lot of times I just have to turn it off. So, you know, I have to socially distance myself from the media the and from the TV and from Facebook, <laughs> you know, and all those things as well, which also means that we're becoming even more isolated and secluded um, because we're not, you know, using that only outlet that we have for that. But um, I think, you know, it's just been, necessary in order to keep, you know, boundaries and to keep myself healthy and in a, in a good place. I mean, there's been a couple of times where, I mean, I won't lie, like it was like I, I had a breakdown, like mentally, like I was like, you know, done. Um, but then I just kind of realized the source, I kind of pull back and I just kind of recalculate, recoup, you know, all those things. And, um, and then I get better and I just realize what I need to stay away from. And, and, you know, really just allow like a, that inner gut feeling to kind of tell me what is right for us and what is right for us to do may not be what's right for you guys to do. So, you know, I think we all have to go into this, you know, as an individual family, trying to figure out the right things for each individual family. There is no broad, you know, way to take care of anything for everybody. And so I think that that's one thing that I've had to I've had to realize. Yeah, I think that um, when it comes to Americans' mental health through this whole thing, there's going to be a lot of probably good and bad that comes out of it. And I say that because so many people already struggle with um, depression and being isolated and not being able to be around the people that you love or who love you and, and maybe even support you in a way that you didn't know, all of a sudden that's gone. And if you don't quickly replace it with phone calls or video chats or online gatherings, um, I can imagine it'd be really hard. And so, I mean, if you find yourself in that situation and you know us, like hit us up because, I mean, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, and chat. I've talked to, you know, I've talked about it before that, I do deal with a bit of depression and anxiety and I recognize my triggers. And I, there's sometimes, because I am an introvert extrovert, sometimes getting over it means that I need to surround myself with people. Sometimes getting over it means that I have surrounded myself with people too much and I need to pull back and I need to isolate a little bit. So, you know, I have both of those experiences. So absolutely, yeah, I'd be more than happy to talk about it. So, okay, I'm going to ask a couple of questions, and these are spontaneous questions, mm. and I want you to answer with the very first thing that pops in your head. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yep. What is something that you miss the most? Coconuts. <laughs> you said the first thing that popped <laughs> into my head. Okay. Okay. 
Because I haven't had a coconut. And like, you were the one who said, put your phone on silent before you started. <laughs> this is podcaster. Wait, it's on Do Not Disturb. Well, yeah. Somebody called you who punched through that list, huh? How? Oh, Tiffany. She's so caught. No, it didn't recognize the number. Look. How did that happen? I don't know. Okay. Anyway. Sorry. They're calling us because they want to reach out to you. <laughs> and... Um, Leave connect. me a voicemail. Whoever that was, just leave so, me a voicemail. I'll get back with you okay. as soon as I can. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing. Okay. So, okay. Something that. You can go back to the other question again. What was it? I don't even remember was now. Something that you missed the most. <laughs> um, I miss getting on an airplane and flying around. It's awesome. Okay. I love that. I, I'm, I just like I'm, I'm an airport junkie, I guess. Oh, weird. He loves going to airports and he loves going to hospitals. <laughs> no, I don't like going to hospitals. No, especially when they're unplanned. <laughs> no, not that kind. When he's not the patient, when somebody else is the patient, he loves going to hospitals and just hanging out and eating in the food court and using the vending machines and just walking up and down the halls. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> See? <laughs> I told you. <laughs> it doesn't scare me, at least. <laughs> Not in the current situation, though. We stay away from the hospitals. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you miss the least? Mm. Um, traffic. <laughs> traffic is undeniably better right now. It's unreal if you happen to be out for any reason. Uh mm -hmm. There is no rush hour in Atlanta. It, normally, rush hour is 5 a.m. till 10 a.m., 10.30, and then maybe yeah. from 2 until 8. <laughs> I don't, yeah. It's not as bad as other cities in, in this country. But, but we did get a traffic report on Friday because yeah. Friday. Because Friday yeah. started opening some things They started things opening some things back oh, up. But. When did you record this? It uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, it uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. So... Um, you gonna ask me the questions? Oh, how has <laughs> and this is completely spontaneous? I have no idea what he's about to ask me. <laughs> oh, was I supposed to come up with some questions? Okay. No, no um, the same questions. I just, you know, I have to. What do you pretend. miss the least? I'll just go back to that one. What do I miss the least? I miss the least having like schedules. I miss the least, or I least miss not having to be at a certain place at a certain time, you know, and all like fixed up and dressed up with my hair all done and my makeup on and, you know, all that stuff. I don't miss that. That's probably what I miss the least. I'm sorry, baby. I know. I know. We were pretty busy <laughs> before. Sorry. We had something on Monday. Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm apologizing. Thursday. Because I'm apologizing because I, I just said I, I don't miss yeah, or I, I missed the least fixing myself up. So I I'm sorry. What? I, I don't. Just, yeah. You just look great. She didn't do anything <laughs> today and she looks amazing, right? I have mascara on. Oh, lipstick. yeah. She did stuff today. Yeah. Okay. So next question. Um, <clears throat> when's the last time you drove your vehicle? That was not what I was expecting. I had a really great answer for the other question. Uh -huh. Last time I drove my vehicle... I don't remember. Stumped her, folks. I don't remember. It has to be before. It's the Corona stump. It has to be before the lockdown because I think we may have taken it out once, but I think you actually drove. Yeah. But, oh, no, 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 no. I drove it when we took it, when we took the sea doo and I had to back it down. She said sea doo yes, sea doo <laughs> We had to back it down the ramp. In order to hook up, that's right. Put the sea on the trailer. You helped retrieve me out of the water. Yeah, so th that was the last time I drove my vehicle, but then you ended up driving it home. So I only drove it backwards down a ramp and then up a ramp, and that was so it. Technically, you were trailering. You weren't really dri driving. I'll just anyway. Um, okay, so um, last time you had McDonald's. Years. So the next question no. was, what do I miss the most? Okay, so what do I miss the most <laughs> would be Supermax. Oh, 
Super Max. Super Max nachos from Super Max. And we they have the cheese them. dip. And oh my gosh, they have the best chips. Let's see if they're open again. Oh, they're like, their chips are like thin and crunchy. And like they fry them there at the actual restaurant. And they do the a roasted tomatilla is, oh, sauce. It's so good. good. Oh my goodness, yes. So that's what I miss the most. Their cheese dip is great. Yes, absolutely. Oh yeah. So. Nachos Max. How many times have you ordered something from Amazon? Um, three times. Bull crap. Well, no, you're talking about how many <laughs> items or how many times? Because the oh, items count would be. How many items have you ordered from Amazon? Because I'm like, I um, know that I have retrieved more than three probably, items from my porch. Probably six things from Amazon and I had one eBay delivery. Yeah, and I guess the rest was probably mine. And then I've done shipping to eBay and selling things. It's you great. know, I try to be nice to Amazon and I try to like bulk everything into one order. And I just add it to my cart, add it to my cart, add it to my cart. And then like within a week or two, I decide, okay, my cart is full enough to where I feel like I can make an order and you know feel okay about it. They ship everything separately. So, and I'm trying to be nice to the environment. I'm trying to be nice yeah. to Amazon. I'm trying to be nice to the drivers and all, yeah. you know, everything I can, involved. I can actually. No, they, ship it, all, they ship it all separately. There oh. is an option oh. for Amazon Delivery Day. Oh. You've missed that part, apparently. I did not know that. So you want, you want to do is you want to use the option for the shipping to create an Amazon Delivery Day. And they put everything together. And you get it in one package once a week. Even if you have Did John know multiple about purchases throughout the week, they will basically queue them up and then have one day that they get delivered. All right. If y'all know about this, leave me a comment because I am curious to know how many other people know about this because I didn't know anything about it. Amazon Delivery Day. And I bet you through the magic of editing, you could probably pop it up right here and like have like part of the screen show what I'm talking about. Okay. Right here. Sure. Right now. Right here. Right now. Right here. Right now. Uh-oh. We're going to get copyright infringement. Look out. <laughs> yeah, because that was Because so I wanted this. Accurate. When you were talking about getting out, I'm like, I do my hair's tops. Check my nails. I wanted to do that, but again, copyright. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. We'll have to cut that out, I guess. Oh, boy. Yeah, quarantine's been fun. Um, what have you learned during this period of time that you would like to carry forward? Um, this is going to sound weird, but the, the laid back part of this, of not having the hustle and bustle. That's not weird at all. Um, no, it, it, because... As Americans, we're programmed to be like, go, 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 do, do, do. This I said, do, do. Um, keep, keep going and be busy and yeah, but work our yourself podcast to death. is all about teaching people to, to not do that. I know, I know, okay. but it's so easy to fall into. It is. And for everybody, hopefully, you've learned that you don't have to be as busy to be alive. Like you can still get things done. And you can work from home and not be in 10 hours and you can get what you need to be done, need to have done in, in a few hours or just like homeschooling. Yeah. Get it done. Move on. Get it done. Move on. Yep. And I think there's a lot of public school parents out there who are realizing that. Yep. Okay. How about you? Okay. For me, um, something that I'd like to carry forward, I think to kind of the same Thing. I mean, it's something that we already try to implement in our life, but like I said, you know, we still have schedules. We still have things that we have to do and deadlines we have to meet and stuff, but, um, you know, it's just, uh, I just, I want to continue that. It, this obviously has like, it's really like confirmed that we're on the right path when we, you know, have been yeah. trying to do that and, and trying to teach that and inspire you to do the same thing and to, and I really, I think so as well. I think also something I'd like to carry forward is um, 
I in no means want to become a prepper in no way, but something that I'd like to carry forward is maybe being prepared more. Like I know that I feel like we've been prepared financially, we've been prepared mentally and emotionally um, for this and trying to prepare you guys as well. But, um, you know, I feel like there's, I could still do more and. Well, even little things like we started shopping together, grocery shopping, so and that's fun. not something that we've done mm -hmm. in the past. And um, last time, or one of the first times we went, we bought a lot of extra stuff and it was it was, it was my fault, honestly. Um, but when we went I stick the to next, the list. When we went to the I next. Stick to the list. When we realized that the cover was low, low or lower than we wanted it to be, and we realized we needed to go shopping again, it was almost two weeks later. Yeah. And that has never happened for us. So, Which has been really cool because I think this has also taught us to provision. So when we get the catamaran, provisioning, we will be, yes. you know, kind of. Doing this whole, and I'm thinking provisioning. You know what? Provisioning. Maybe that's something I'd like to carry forward. Okay. For those who don't know, yeah, provisioning, provisioning is the act prior to leaving a port uh, when you're going to go out for an extended period of time on a sailboat. Provisioning is the shopping trip that you take to get all the supplies that you need food, water, uh, drinks. Whatever beverages you fancy, um, supplies that you might need while you're out, you do provisioning run, and then you stow everything away, and that is your food for the duration of your journey. Yep. So that's I what I'm going to carry forward. I probably got all that wrong, but that that's my take on it. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what we consider provisioning. Right. All right. So do you find that you've been able to find new adventure? Because our, um, our podcast is, is about transforming attitudes and telling adventures. So Yeah. In a way, I have. And so one of the things that you talk about a lot in your podcast is minimalism and making sure that you don't have things that you've collected that you don't need. And so for me, I'm still coming around on that fully. To be honest, so for me, it's been fun <laughs> cleaning the garage out, finding things that I didn't need, and then looking on eBay for me, I, because like I was holding on to some things. I'm like, oh, I know this is worth something, right? And finally, I'm like, okay, I know it's worth something. Let's go find out what it really is. And I look on eBay, and I'm like, this old graphics card is worth $80. What? I didn't know that. So I sold it. On eBay, and I got some things listed. Immediately. And like, all yeah. of a sudden, there's a monetary reward for getting rid of things. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> right. So that has been a new adventure, which is finding things that I don't need and getting rid of them and knowing that if I had to later on, I could pick them up because I got something. I could pick them up again if I needed to, but I won't. I, I won't. I just won't. That's the way it works. I won't need it again. I was holding on to it and I didn't need to. And I was able to sell it and make some money on the side. Pretty cool. And in the process, I was able to go through and pull out a bunch of other stuff that I didn't need. And I was okay throwing it away. And I know that she's like, <laughs> she's like so happy right now. I'm so happy. <laughs> I love throwing things away. Yeah. I do. I do. So I think for me, like, I don't really know that I've found new adventure. I think that I really don't think that things have changed enough for me and my lifestyle that I have found new adventure. I have, um, may, well, you know what, maybe a little bit founding new adventure and finding my own space. That's been an adventure. That is. <laughs> well, and I will say this too. Um, your podcast has kind of made new meaning to yourself because yeah okay because the 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 interviews and connecting with people and finding out where people are at and sharing their journey is something that anybody can relate to so you're you're doing that and I think that you've kind of reinvigorated yourself with the podcast content okay so now I feel bad yes 
I have found new adventure with my podcast and with um, the people on my podcast, like my guests, and um, with my listeners. She's as got well. some great upcoming interviews that uh, I just can't wait for y'all to see. Yeah, you're gonna be good. Teaser there. Oh yeah. <laughs> so stay tuned. Stay tuned. Y'all need to hit the subscribe button wherever that is. And uh, yeah. Yeah, and stay tuned. So, um, how are you transforming your attitude during a current situation? Um, I don't know. I'm generally a pretty easygoing guy and pretty happy. Um, I think that we all started this this whole thing with the thought, this is kind of like a snow day. So, you kind of sleep in for a few days or whatever and you kind of... Well, it'll go away in a week. Well, it it didn't right I, away. So there was probably an initial like, uh, but then it becomes the new normal and you're like, oh, yeah, this is great. Yeah, he is pretty fun, lighthearted, easy to get along with. I think because of that, though, um, it's made it a lot easier around the house because, you know, the head of our household is lighthearted and fun and energetic and gets me goofy yeah and so um i think that that has helped our attitudes you know within this whole thing and um we've really not had any problem with attitudes i don't think that we've needed really to transform our attitudes um maybe just on how we view the situation possibly yeah but yeah i think that um we kind of went into this with a good attitude um, the moment that we were watching all of your work go away, I mean, we had every right to get a bad attitude at that moment. But yeah, we just really looked at each other. We're just like, I'm not mad oh, okay, not, I guess we'll find something else at. to do. So, nobody yeah. to be mad at except maybe, right. and whoever started this whole thing didn't sound the alarm early enough. Whatever. Or did they? Or did they? <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> Okay, so what is one thing that you would like to um, leave everyone with that you hope transforms their attitudes as well? Because you know you need an attitude adjustment. I'm talking to you. <laughs> need an attitude adjustment. So what do you want to leave them with that you hope transforms mm. their attitudes as well? Um. Just know that the sun will rise tomorrow. Like every day that goes by, there's going to be another day. And don't get so caught up in today. Don't get caught up in, oh, I haven't, I haven't done everything I could. Like there's tomorrow. And... What about it, for the people who are going, oh, crap, there's tomorrow? Well, yeah, because you could have that thought, Tomor tomorrow's another day that I haven't paid my bills, or tomorrow's another day that I'm stuck in the house. But at the same time, tomorrow's another opportunity to reinvent yourself, to have fun, to call people that you haven't called. Um, tomorrow's another opportunity to cook the perfect omelet, you know, like, We've been having some great time with the cast iron skillet making omelets or eggs in the morning. It's Tiffany can make quite a some competition, perfect actually. cast iron <laughs> eggs and not even get them to stick. I don't know how she does it. I got to learn her tricks, but um, I don't know. Like, don't don't get down in what the news is saying. Know that the sun's going to come up tomorrow, and sunlight is good for you. It kills the virus in like fifteen seconds. Just don't drink any bleach. Or disinfectants or whatever. Why would you say that? Because somebody else said that. And it was <laughs> obviously if you're gonna did do they? that and you're or gonna follow they? that advice, or you have, did they say that? No. If you follow the advice that kind of advice, it, it, actually, let me let me say this too. That wasn't advice. That was somebody speaking out of the side of their mouth going, and they didn't even say uh, uh, <laughs> edit beep. Yeah. <laughs> 
side political rant there. Yeah, the media, this can't be the a media. political. This is not a political agenda. Like we can't have any political talk on this right now. Okay, I'll just say that this is a politically free zone. <laughs> okay, I won't say anything then. <laughs> I'm not sure how you're going to get that. Maybe out of that. you need to transform your attitude. Um, no, you got to transform <laughs> yours. Okay, so yeah, I mean, we probably need to transform our attitudes. So, Bye. the sun will rise tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. I don't know the next word. Don't be sad. Don't be sad. <laughs> Tomorrow. This is the goofy part of me that people don't ever see. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Um, okay, so that is the end of our questions. And um, Oh, there's another section? No. Oh, okay. We're done. That... This is it. Okay. Okay. So that's the end of our Verse video question series. And yeah, that's fun. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys for listening. And we hope this kind of helped you out a little bit. If you would like to answer some of these questions on your own, leave us a comment. Um, you can even send me an email at tiffany at tiaflifepodcast.com. I'll give you a shout out on one of my episodes. And um, yeah. remember to so, click that subscribe, smash that like, and make some it. comments below. Smash it. Hit the bell, make some comments because you're going to want to listen to the other videos that we have oh, yeah. coming up. And subscribe to the podcast on um, whatever podcast platform you're on. Spotify, iTunes, Google. It's everywhere. <laughs> thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Is, okay. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. How long do you have to smile? I'm just going to sit here until I stop it. Um, I think that we're going to end up talking like this to the mic for a little bit. Can you though. just stop the podcast? No. This my is cheeks the, are hurting. This is the section of the I podcast. I need you to stop the podcast. My cheeks hurt. Can you just stop? The, the, I forget what they call this, but it's basically where you're right up on the microphone. And my cheeks hurt. You can hear everything that I'm saying. You can't hear what I'm saying right now because um, my cheeks hurt. Yeah, so this is my... Uh, my, hey there, how you doing? Okay, TF Life Podcasters, let's keep doing this. Yeah. Okay, cut. Okay. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. And we work hard to transform every attitude of life by telling each adventure of life. Adventures are great. See what I did there? Yeah. That's <laughs> pretty awesome. I'm the Slady Girl. This is actually going to be the beginning of a series that we're going to be doing with future people that we were interviewing. Well, not future people. People who live in not the future. Future it's people. It's going to be great. <laughs> with people that we are going to interview. Uh, that we have. Yeah. That we're going to interview. I know, you, I know what you mean. And I think they know what you mean, too. <laughs> okay. We're going to start over. How's my hair? <laughs> oh, I forgot. I got to talk like you uh, sailing the vagabone. So every question that Brandon answers, he's gonna to have to use a different accent. A different accent? <laughs> no problem. I only have one accent, Southern. <laughs> I can, But I can turn it on or I can turn it off, so. That was your cue, you missed it. Oh, um, <laughs> that's, that's what, what she, she said. said. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yes. Throw it away. <laughs> oh my I can't gosh. even think. I need to stop looking I'm at myself. Stop. I think looking I'm, at myself, no, I'm it's actually. Great. I'm, I'm um, loving looking at myself. It's great. <laughs> oh my gosh, this I never knew so you were terrible. so vain. I am not. <laughs> the older you get, oh man. Gosh. Well, it gets harder. It gets harder, folks. That's what she said.
So. <laughs> oh my gosh. Stop making it in. That's what she said. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if we keep going, we're going to have to mark this explicit. Um, I think you already made that decision. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna have to start over. Throw it away. <laughs> and bring it back. So, how has social distancing affected you the most? I'm real close to you. 